Oh, I just realized that we're almost out of space, so yeah, this is definitely only gonna be a lore episode. I need this to be as small as possible. Let's get this shit done. So, none of the stuff I saved before, uh, when I last played. None of the stuff I did when I last played saved, so we're gonna, um, just quickly redo all that. Um... Um, what were we gonna get? Oh yeah, we were gonna finish up the Arbalest Tom. Nope, we have that. Um, I guess let's finish up the energy shield? Hey, do you see this? Uh, you didn't see it. Uh, that's what my mouse is doing. Oh. Where it uh, it doesn't actually read clicks or like hold clicks as clicks or as holds anymore. It just kind of takes it, a while. It reads it as like it reads it as multiple or... clicks. Yeah, because my mouse is busted. I don't know why. Fun times. Um, I might trade with you since you don't do as much like holding down buttons as me. Yeah. And I kind of miss how big that mouse was. Um, no, dashing refills glory kills is good, but damaging. Yeah, that might be it. No. Well, let's just grab both the exploration ones. This one's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually getting close to this being all filled up. Yeah. Especially if I go back and do all the other stuff in the previous levels. Like, I did not get jack shit in that last level, so I could go unlock a bunch of stuff. Where does this lead? Oh, so... These doors. Pretty sweet doors. What the fuck is out here? Wait, is that the Eternal or the 2016 armor? Shit. That's pretty cool. Oh, if I'd known that, I would have gotten that before I got the the um, classic armor. Shit. God, I love these doors. Yeah, I know. This whole thing is so cool. This is going to be the final portal, I guess. I love concentric circles. What can I say? This place is great. Oh, you have to actually, like, jump up to this one because it's broken. Okay, what's in here? The fuck is that? Oh, that's a Night Sentinel armor. Yo! I'm unlocking that one next. Okay. Also, we're just in space. That's Earth, with the, you know, with all the fucked up demonic shit on symbols it. all over it. That's that's the demonic corruption. <laughs> and then, man, the stars are real pretty. Yeah, they are. What the fuck are those? That's not stars. You could see them moving. Is that a fleet? Oh no, that's a chunk of the moon. Oh. So the moon is super fucked. It's just blown to shit. Um. Oh, our tides are. That is the least of the problems we have. Well, clearly, These are sigils like... you can see from space, burned into the surface of the planet. The tides don't matter at this point. I think like 60% of the world's population died in the first month. Jesus Christ. Like, who gives a shit about the tides? Uh, oh, fuck off. I give a shit about the tides. They don't matter now. <laughs> the Earth will figure it out. Humans are gone. <laughs> so are so is most life. Yeah. Oh, let's see. How far am I on Doom? At fourteen, four or fourteen discets. And that's for Doom and Doom Two, I believe. No, this one needs a password. Uh, okay. Hmm. So Doom One needs fourteen discets, which is not. Not how long that took before. Huh. I think it was what four floppies, five floppies. Hey Google, how many floppies was Doom on? According to PC Gamer, the thing belonged to Romero after all, and on the eBay listing, he even promises that he'll sign them if the buyer sees fit. These are the originally shipped Doom Two floppies for PC and compatibles. Romero writes. Seven, the first Doom 2 version. Okay. 
So there are five floppies on the for, on Doom 2. I don't know what the fuck was Doom 1. It didn't tell me. Anyway, let's read some lore. <laughs> Sam's good at reading. I'm bad. Yeah, I'm it. okay. Okay, I think we have... Did we already read the Hellgrowth? No, we haven't. Okay, so we stopped at Doom Hunter Base. So... Alright. The Hellgrowth, Part 1. Vega Data Entry. The Hellgrowth formations on Earth have undergone great scrutiny by experts of the Allied Nations. These cancer-like growths exhibit alarming cellular reproduction rates, outpacing any biological life form previously known. Their structural pattern is chaotic, almost random, with only one identifiable constant. The emergence of totem-like nests, which at full maturity resonate with powerful electromagnetic frequencies, capable of producing a form of inverse quantum field. These fields, once activated, result in the fabrication of hell portals, tears in space-time, which serve as gateways between dimensions. Part 2 The growth exhibits certain predetermined qualities. In the consumption of our ecosystem, it creates environmental conditions more conducive for its own continued formation, in effect employing an organic method of terraformation. The resulting environment is hostile to terrestrial life, producing atmospheric toxins and a multitude of environmental hazards. Although it is understood that the growth accelerates the arrival of demon life on Earth, it is not clear how the growths themselves originated or whether there was some sort of catalyst that created the conditions necessary for their existence. It is believed that if the source of the growths can be identified, there may be a means of uprooting the entire formation. Super Gore Nest. Report, report file number ARC AAR C037, Comsec Red, Analyst Washington, T Washington 043. Report starts. Operation Lock AAR follows. Following reports of UAC cultist presence at the lock reactor, ARC AAR A291, recon teams in. Infil Gamma and Infil Hector attempted to gain entry to lock and assess the situation. Their final transmission in indicated a massive demonic presence entering the reactor facility through continuum gates. Sick. Hell portals. An emergency global council meeting approved an immediate ARC response to the situation at lock reactor. The assembled coalition strike force included four U.S. battle mech divisions. The uh, Conyer long-range naval artillery barrage fleet, 27 U.S. Nightbird Apaches, three NATO shock trooper battalions, two Conyer rapid response Levi tank divisions, and 18,000 Coalition Special Force units. Holy shit. The initial bombardment from LRNAB was met with immediate response from invasion forces. An estimated 8,000 DP-013G units, sick gargoyles, attacked the fleet, sinking 32 vessels and disabling a further 78% of the fleet. The remaining ships retreated to a position approximately 32 miles off the shore, beyond the reach of the gargoyles, but also out of artillery range. With the fleet out of action, the battle mechs and Apaches initiated a danger-close salvo against reactor against the reactor, as shock troops and special forces attempted a rearward infiltration. Several platoons made it inside the reactor where the demons had already established DP-136 nest, 6 Super Gore Nest. Although Gore Nests have been reported at various invasion sites, this was the largest so far observed. The nest has been built around the reactor core itself. Several thousand IFF beacons are amassed at the nest location, suggesting the demons are using our fallen forces as part of their bioorganic continuum gate. At the time of writing, the DP-136 nest is considered to be ground zero of the invading force. Unless the Continuum Gate is destroyed, this analyst seems, sees no way to stem the influx of aggressors. Recommended response, total nuclear annihilation. Report ends. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Alright, I'll take this one. In 2150, following the loss of communication between Earth and Mars-based facilities, UAC Director Dr. Samuel Hayden suddenly resurfaced on Earth before the AN Council. The demonic invasion of Earth had already begun, and Dr. Hayden had arrived just in time to provide aid. He supplied the Resistance armies with the Argent technology and advanced armaments, taking helm of newly formed Ark 
as lead director. Dr. Hayden's tactical and scientific acumen were invaluable to the war effort, and he was soon given full command over the resistance efforts by the Global Council. The ARC uh, engaged the demons with bleeding edge tech, exosuits, and heavy frame battle mechs, but found themselves fighting a losing battle. Operation Hellbreaker was Samuel's final plan, a powerful counter uh, counterattack that ultimately ended in failure. His robotic torso retrieved by ARC soldiers, Samuel was now tended to and monitored by a skeleton crew of scientists. They had been given contingency orders to safeguard his body along with the crucible obtained on Mars. Okay, the crucible is the sword thing that we got. Uh, and we've heard those logs, so... What the... Okay. Yeah, I, I, know, I don't need a tutorial for that. So now we have the uh, fucking all the lore for the Sentinels. <laughs> oh, jeez. Chair needs replaced. Um, wait, I want to go back really quick, because there was a really cool image of Aiden here. Damn. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. That's the Crucible. Fucking asshole stole that from me at the end of the game, thinking he was going to go continue his work, and then more demons happen because he's a fucking idiot. All right. So this is in Story of the Sentinels. Translation, translation from the Ligra Soltegena, Book of Kings. It was Libra. That just makes more sense already the word we use. <laughs> what treachery comes from our darkest selves, driven by greed and want, for I have been deceived by the Deag. Deag? I think they said Deag. I think it's Deag, actually. They came north with I, the priest says allies to our cause against the con maker, and her unscrupulous methods. Their silver tongues wagging, they laid a plan for us and sowed the seeds of desire for hasty triumph. They claimed knowledge of the maker's source of power in the demon realm. A vast foundry of souls where the innocent are put to the fire for the put to fire for the essence. In the foundry's destruction of our victory in a foundry's destruction, our victory is assured, they told us, and the fools that we were, that I am, believed their lies. In their word, they we sent the Doomslayer and the Night Sentinels. Or on their word, we sent the we sent the Doomslayer and the Night Sentinels to destroy the foundry. And the priests cast a gateway for their egress. As the last veteran entered the demon's empire, our final hope of reclaiming our dominion, the Dieg closed the path and left them stranded. They were trapped, lost in the eternal void by the actions of the traitors. How could I not see their intentions? Am I blinded by the grief of, for the loss of Terrace Na Nabad? Of my people. We have fled again, with barely a legion of the Night Sentinels left to protect us. The Dieg are gone. Return to their mistress. May the wraiths forgive my failure. Okay. So that's how Doomslayer and the Night Sentinels got trapped in, in hell. Good to know. Oh, don't even need to open up a thing for this one. Argenta legend speaks of sentinel beasts, loyal creatures that lived as companions of the hardened warriors. Often larger, swifter, and stronger than any, of their, uh, any others of their kind, these animals shared instincts with their masters and aided them in battle. The Night Sentinels never shared publicly the origin of these creatures, for only they stood worthy of them. Okay. And the king that we've already met. King Novik ruled over, the Sent over Sentinel Prime for many years as its warrior patriarch, ordained protector of the sovereign Sentinel worlds. The Sentinel people, defined by a legacy of war, deemed only those of worthy caste benefit to rule, in the times of battle, is expected that the king lead from the battlefield rather than the, the safety of the throne. As it is written in Sentinel Law, a king unfit for battle is, is likewise unfit to rule. For millennia, the Sentinel people have secured their civilization against the threat of invasion from beast and human alike, passing on the mantle of battle to each subsequent generation and refining the craft of, of war into an art of ultimate mastery. Even in times of great peace, the Night Sentinels remain vigilant developing new technique, the technologies of conquest, each the more capable of securing the domain across the sovereign, across the sovereign worlds. Oh, hey, the betrayer. You want me to take this one? Yeah. After years of prolonged war against the demonic threat invading the world, Argent Noor launched an offensive strike against 
across dimensions, sending their greatest warriors into the heart of hell itself. Despite their training and their preparedness, their honor was undone by deceit. Betrayal at the highest levels of command left Argent Denor's bravest warriors cut off and scattered in the hellscape. But of these last remaining Night Sentinels, only one remained in hell by choice. Betrayer of the Argenta, it was Commander Valen who, rin who relinquished the keys to the elemental sepulcher in return for his son's resurrection. Haunted by demonic visions, the image of his son's tortured existence plagued him without relent, the whispers of demons pushing him toward madness. In a moment of weakness, he fell prey to the demon's trickery, sealing the fate of Argent Denor and, den and dooming the kingdom to which he swore a lifelong oath to protect. Valen chose exile in the hellscape for his sacrilege. Okay. Damn. Yeah, kind of fucked up a little bit there. And Fortress of Doom. The Fortress of Doom is a command station used by the Sentinels for military operations. ESR dating suggests the structure was built during the reign of King Danek, and spectral analysis of the Sentinel energy signature used to power the various systems confirms this theory. While the rock and metal structure of the vessel is undoubtedly Argenta designed, the castle subsystems, navigation, gravitational centrifuge, life support, are of maker origin, suggesting a design collaboration between the two species. Propulsion is notably absent as it is not required. The fortress manipulates space through an unknown process involving sentinel energy. However, there is no indication that any of the systems were designed for maker use. The access ways, control panels, and living quarters have been all designed for Argenta dimensions, so it can be assumed that the massive structure was made exclusively for Argenta warfare, likely as a flag station of the Night Sentinel's military forces. We have, we have records of the Night Sentinels visiting many inhabited planets in their local quadrant, the extent of their empire still being researched, and this fortress is likely a remnant of what was once a much larger fleet. Okay, so that's why we have the Fortress of Doom. Jeez, okay, three more. And then we'll probably end it. Next time we do this, we'll do Hell. Actually, no, because there's not... So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Seven things of Hell. We can do We can do that. Um, so ten more, ten more entries, that's okay. Translation from the Ligra Sultagena, Book, Book of Kings. In the days before the man first spoke, an immense shard of rock and metal was cast into the world from the heavens. Thunder and cataclysm shook the land as the skies were torn asunder. The cosmic spear cleft a hole through our mortal lands pole to pole. From the cold wastes of the umbral plains to the fetid swamps of Iron Fang, the womb of the world opened and the elemental wraiths, the firstborn, spilled forth. They took to the skies, fierce in their emancipation. In their exultation, they brought vitality to the land, and all that felt their breath were awakened from eternal slumber. Fierce beasts and an unforgiving biosphere rose in the passing of their shadow as the wraith call echoed across Argent Dunor. First came the ancestrals, feral creatures invig invigorated by the magic of the wraiths. They grew to enormous heights, Mighty behemoths who waged war with each other for years untold. Their battles tore the land asunder and destroyed all creation caught in their wake. The Wraith Call continued to spread across the land, and soon the Argenta emerged from the steppes, our souls stirred into form by the power of their breath. The Titans towered over the wild-blooded tribes but found them uncowed. The secret of the sword was discovered, and in the darkness of sweltering mountain forges we beat steel until it was strong enough to pierce bone and sever flesh. Thus we came to be, born of rock and fire, lowly in birth but risen by the strength of our will. By the blessedness of the First Ones, we forged sword and shield and took the hammer to the Ancestrals. We claimed dominion of creation by right of blood and magic, and the time of man came to be. With the ancestral beasts driven back into their bleak valleys, we rose. We tilled the fertile land, husbanded beasts of burden, and built towering cities. In the hallowed place, on the obsidian throne, we crowned King Omero the father, the first of the line that shall, remain in, that shall reign in perpetuity. We built the Cathedral of Reflection to worship the First Ones, and formed the Order of the Daag, whose priests pay tribute to the wraiths and appease their tempestuous hunger. Our sons and daughters chose the path of the sword or the path of the alchemist, for each duty honors the gods. 
Though our, our ways were righteous, we were not without strife. Storms and great quakes cast our spires down. Barbaric tribes laid siege to our fields in search of the great gifts Mother Argenta had bestowed upon our world, and the song of the Wraith Call threatened to drive lesser men into madness. We were not lesser men. We defended that which the First Ones gifted to us, our lands and right to the bounty held within. We beat back the barbarian hordes and hardened our resolve. We rose above the fire, our bodies and souls tempered, and an unbreakable will was shaped in the forge of battle. What emerged was the heart of our legion, the Order of the Night Sentinels. Okay. Translation from the Ligra Solgenta. I'm just going to stop reading that line. In the time of grief, when King Etrix took the throne, a blessing came upon the people of, the Ar of Argento. White porcelain beings from a world above our own brought gifts to Denur. Observers to our great deeds, admirers of our convictions, they sought to make the bond with our sword, and they sought to make bond with our swords and bring lasting order to our world. They were beings unlike any we had, uh, had seen before. Sword and shield had no weight against them, for the ethero ethereal flesh of these luminous beings seemed unbound by mortality. Able to move through time and space. They held sway over all dominions of the known and unknown dimensions. Through their ways, we grew stronger, our society bolstered by their infinite wisdom and all-knowing power, assur assuring our people's safety for all time, in this world and the next. Where we sharpened the blade and mastered our magic, they bolstered the soul and spirit. Death would no longer be the end for our people. The ones we call the Makers, our new allies in this brutal world, have given us the security in death we fought so hard to achieve in life. We would find eternal peace, and our, and our minds would rest easy with the knowledge that those we fought alongside in battle would join us in the, in the lands beyond the mortal plane. The strength of our ways, the purity of our essence, would by maker law grant us passage to the great city in the clouds. There our women, children, warriors, and kin alike would welcome us. We, adapt we adopted the holy doctrines of the makers, gifted in exchange with the chance to earn eternal rest for our mortal souls in blessed Urkta. The covenant we held now under the embrace of our new gods fostered a peace we had never known, for they were unlike the first ones, whose presence offered no paradise from fear and the uncertainty of existence in a harsh and unforgiving world. The Maker's embrace was warm and guided us into an era of spiritual prosperity. Okay. Do we have any more after this one? Uh, Meme decides the hell stuff. No. Wait, what was... Okay, that's just the arsenal. That's just enemies. And we don't know what that is. <laughs> you want this one? Or you want me to? I'll take it. Okay. Uh, wait, no. That's not the right one. Oh, yeah, part three. Part three, yeah. With machine and enchantment of the Makers, the Argenta brought our newfound clarity to the disparate realms of the Empyrean Void. We took flight with the support of our gods, spreading the enlightened word of the Con Maker. We discovered there was not one enemy, but many. Worlds and peoples unknown to the Argenta were unveiled, and we saw our own suffering reflected in their eyes. Our righteous army strode into battle under the banner of the Night Sentinels and fought for the freedom of all peoples from the grasp of those who would exploit and prey upon them. Though we battled on soil not our own, the blood we shed in foreign land safeguarded Argentinur and the sons and daughters that defended it. Those through the strange people sorry, through the strange peoples we liberated new alliances. Through the strange people we liberated, new alliances were formed, and our beliefs became their own. Our armies swelled. As the Argenta traversed the stars with gleaming war fleets of the Con Maker, the Con Ma the Con of the Makers, it's <laughs> approached it, King Rowan on his throne. It's a lot. <laughs> oh God, so much. He sensed his God restless by her disquiet manner. The King and Con spoke, and the God revealed she had foreseen a schism in the blood of the Argenta. A test would be required to identify its host among us. She spoke of a holy rite to be performed on the strongest of our warriors. Only those that proved worthy would be tested, for the impurity could reside in only the most resilient of our legion. The Divinity Machine, a great tribute by the Maker Scolaris, would help us to cleanse any impurities from our flock, ensuring our continued prosperity in this world and in the Maker realm that awaited in the afterlife. The malicious one, if not exhumed from our ranks, would jeopardize our safe passage to the heavenly realm of Urdak. 
The Dark One was not amongst them yet, nor would he be for many generations. Only the Mother God through divination and maker sight would determine where he stood before them. When he stood before them. The makers were truth, and only their unclouded eyes could find the one who was marked. The prophecy of the unholy one was written, but through the ages the warning grew faint until only the con maker herself and the high priests of the Order Dayag still whispered of he that would one day come to threaten their way of light. I'm assuming it's either the beast or the slayer. Okay. Hell barges. Atop mighty thralls, the hell priests oversaw the invasion of the mortal world. The thrall, slave titan of the underworld, carried the priest temples into the into the wake of battle, providing the priests with with vigil of hell's advance from a strategically impervious emplacement. From their temple perch, the priests would emanate a powerful psionic influence, imposing greater coordination among the chaotic forces of hell and increasing their battle effectiveness. The thrall possessing a superior resilience provided indestructible by con proved indestructible by conventional weapons, thwarting all attempts by arc def uh, defensive uh, forces. Only by severing the priest's psionic tether could the titan be neutralized, an act that would be accomplished by the infiltration of the temple itself. Oh, wrong button. I want to... Oh, I don't have to do that. Oh. Oh, perfect. Powerful practitioners of arcane magics, the priests have warped their powers to suit their insidious purpose, harnessing the dark forces of hellish pyroma psychomancy to prepare the earth for the final blood ritual. By blood were the hell priests bound the dark ritual which now consumed the earth, and so long as even one of them lives, the consumption of earth will continue, allowing hell unfettered rule of the mortal world. Only by destroying the priests can the blood ritual be stopped and earth saved. Okay. Dag Nylox. One of the three Hell Priests, Dag Nylox, is charged with ensuring that Hell's invasion of Earth succeeds. He prefers to operate on the planet's surface, working in his unholy barge carried on the back of a demonic titan. This provides him an elevated, mobile position with which to oversee the campaign against humanity. Spiteful and cruel, Nylox frequently captures civilians alive so that they're still beating so that their still living blood can be harvested for his occult rituals. Seems right. Deag Ranak. Dark viceroy to the Chaos Throne, Ranak has long served as one, as one of Hell's emissaries on Earth, laying the foundation for the planet's inevitable invasion. In secrecy, Ranak has prepared the Hellgate, awaiting the omen of the Sixth Seal, that which signals the Age of Rapture, which will cleanse Earth as foretold by the Maker Prophets. Ranak worked closely with Olivia Pierce during the development of the original Mars Project, and since her death has taken total control of the UAC. His promises of wealth, power, and everlasting life have corrupted the organization from within, absolving its employees of their moral conscience, accelerating the sacrifice of Earth in exchange for the lure of Argent energy and the promise of undying union with Hell. Dayak Ranag previously served the king of Argentinur as sentinel priest, guiding the Argenta's spiritual growth as a hallowed figure. After the betrayal, he abandoned his home world, working on behalf of the Khan Maker and personally overseeing the transformation of viable planets. Ranak has constructed a veritable, a veritable fortress in the Polar Caps to protect him during his dark work. And I killed him. <laughs> Once a race of beast like hunters, the Doom Hunter creature was known to the sentinel warriors in ages past as lethal stalkers of the metal age of course it was called the metal age <laughs> i mean i know it was the age when they were figuring out metal and actually fighting back against the demons yeah extracted from the frozen depths of the polar tundra the doom hunter belongs to an ancient race uncovered during the cultist cultist excavation excavation in the remote arctic Preserved below the for frozen ice for millions of years, the unearthed remains of this creature were deemed suitable for reconstruction, becoming the subject of cultist necro-regenerative bio-experimentation. Within the remote cultist citadel, a high-tech ritual altar, which towers over the Golgothan ruins, the Doom Hunter was ceremoniously and systematically resurrected and rebuilt. While the majority of its components are now cybernetic, it retains a high degree of mental f faculty, a sentient, brutal hunting instinct augmented with armaments of a tank division. 
And this is the one that I'm real interested in. The the me. The me but better. Oh, oh, okay, so that, yeah, that armor that we were looking at is this armor. Oh. So, yeah, it's, they, they were, I, I thought, because, like, from the dialogue, it, it, it confirms that they are part of the Night Sentinels that have been corrupted. Okay, cool, let's read this. A civil war consumed Argent Dunor, the Night Sentinels' guard was quartered by their faith. Torn between serving the con maker or revolting against that which they swore to protect, the most delusion, disillusioned forswore their oath to the Sentinel royalty, abandoning their pact of allegiance made to the throne. These hardened warriors joined the Separatist group led by the exalted, exalted priest class, allying Shouldn't that be exiled? Uh, I guess not. They didn't really exile. Um, allying themselves with the Makers and their devout acolytes in an attempt to coup against the Sentinel royal house. Sentinel warriors who fell in battle having sided with the Makers were ultimately denied finality in death. Resurrected by the divinity machine of Maker design, these fallen Sentinels were returned from the dead, transformed by Hell's power, and recreated with a singular purpose, to hunt the Slayer, now born as knights in Hell's army. Okay, so Marauder is former Sentinels, and that's why they are just me, and I have a lot of fun with this. I'm going to have so much fun fighting them. Also, let's look, Baron of Hell. Wait, why can't I look at your character model? God damn it. Chain gun can quickly falter it. Okay. Does this still have the same? Yeah, it's the same one. What the fuck? We're still missing a super heavy, which is I'm assuming... No, I just actually, I just realized. No, we fought the tyrant. Huh. I don't actually know what the last Super Heavy is going to be then. Because, like, I'm pretty sure this is the Pain Elemental. So we only have one more Heavy Demon to go. We have one Super Heavy to go. And we have one Fodder still. Okay, Erdak. Okay, so we're going to find a fodder, uh, one more Fodder in Erdak. When we go to Heaven. Wait, why are there secrets? What? Wait, there's secrets in my castle? The fuck do you mean? You have secrets in your castle. Oh, wait. I think those are... No? No? Okay, wait a minute. We have to go check those. <laughs> there's secrets in my goddamn castle. And then we'll end this episode, because, Christ, it's been a half hour of reading. Yep. Um. Okay, so to get, we have to go down... secret no you're not a secret you are oh i just hadn't seen these yet so there's something down over there that i haven't seen in terms of what's here okay also is that a bfg i just realized is the thing above this thing a bfg no oh my god i can't wait please let me build you um how the fuck do we get over do we just have to jump while we're outside is that really all we have to do? Okay. Let's go see if we can get there. Trying to figure out the path up there, so back up around. And then it's down there? What the fuck? Oh, I see it. Wait, why can't I get to that? Hey, fuck off. 
Okay, so I need to open this one to get to it. Yeah, there's a hole here. Okay, so next time we're opening this. We're not opening the, uh, the other one. Because there's a hole inside of that that allows me to drop down. Okay. Yeah, that's the one we're opening next. Hell, actually, I could probably exit and open that right now. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go back to the main menu. Oh, your latest pro progress will be saved. Damn it. All right. Well, never mind. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Have a nice night, everybody. Sleep tight.